questions of either the city or the petitioner. We will acknowledge any written comments received by the board. We will allow an appearing party to express their support or objections. The board will discuss the appeal and formulate a resolution to approve the appeal. Five affirmative votes of the board will be required for an appeal to be granted. Finally, any qualified party who is aggrieved by a decision of the board can appeal that decision to the Washtenaw County Circuit Court on a timely basis. Roll call, I am here, Mike Daniel. Here. Dave Devardi. Here. Mike Dobmeyer. Nicole Eisenman. Here. Todd Grant. Here. Heather Lewis. Here. Julie Weatherby. Here. Kirk Westfall. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, moving on to approval of the agenda, do we have any comments or a motion to approve the agenda? Motion from Kurt, support? Support. From Julie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, we have minutes from the December 13th, 2017 ZBA meeting. Are there any comments on those minutes or if not, a motion to approve those minutes? Kirk, is that a motion? Yeah. Support? Support. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Moving on to hearings and appeals, we have ZBA 17031621 Madison Place. John? I'm John Barrett, <laughs> Zoning Coordinator for the City of Ann Arbor. The first case this evening is ZBA case 17-031. The address is 621 Madison Place. This case was tabled in uh, November and it is a carryover from November from last year. Anna Solomon, the property owner, is requesting a variance from Chapter 55 Zoning, Section 5, colon 28 of Area Height and Placement Regulations. Applicant is seeking a six-foot variance from the required 30-foot setback in order to construct a nine-foot, nine-inch by 19-foot addition to the rear of the existing home. If granted, the rear yard setback, setback will be 24 feet. The property is zoned R1C, single-family residential, and is located between South 7th Street and Everwhite Elementary School. The home was built in 1948 and is approximately 1,224 square feet in size. The new two-story addition will contain an entryway and mudroom along with a dining room, dining area for an approximate total of 197 square feet on the first floor. The second floor will be 125 square feet and will accommodate a new closet for an existing bedroom and a new bathtub for an existing bathroom. The combined square footage of both floors will be 322 square feet. If you'll turn your attention to the monitors, the first slide is the location map. You see the highlighted parcel. The next slide is the aerial map showing the um, highlighted property and the surrounding conditions and neighborhood and properties. The next slide is a zoomed in uh, aerial of the property and its existing condition. The applicant is proposing to build the addition in the um, back of the house right in this area. The next slide is the um, survey that was submitted by the applicant showing the existing conditions. You see a wood deck located right here which will be removed and this is the area where the um, rear yard addition will take place. The next slide is the um, proposed addition showing it right here. The next slide is a um, proposed route travel pass for the applicant submitted with the application. The existing route would be coming out of the garage and coming down the driveway into the front of the house. If this ad addition is approved, there will be a new entryway coming from the garage back here along this way. Uh, the next slide shows the existing ground floor, uh, first floor plan. You see the existing deck right here. The next slide shows the proposed addition with the mudroom, entryway, and the dining area with the deck removed. The path from the garage right here coming into the back of the house. The next slide shows the uh, upper floor plan, how it exists. The next slide shows the closet addition, uh, excuse me, the closet addition here, and then the bathtub bath, and the addition in the bath and the second story addition. These are the elevations of the uh, property. This is existing elevation. The next elevation shows the um, 
vertical section of the addition right here. Oh, excuse me, it's back here. Pointing to the wrong side, it's right here. The first and then the second. This is uh, the north elevation, this is the addition. The south elevation, looking at it from the other side with the addition right here, and then the upstairs right here. This is looking at it from the east directly at the rear of the house and how the um, proposed addition will blend in with the existing architecture. These are photos of the um, property. You see the driveway and the garage to the um, east of the um, existing home. And there's the wood deck. This is the rear yard. Proposed deck would be removed and the addition would take place in this area. Back of the existing home. More photos of the rear yard. This is the abutting property. This is the fence line. And you see the fence and the vegetative, vegetative buffer between them and the abutting property owners. This is ex uh, showing the um, change in topography, the slope from the front door down the driveway, and then the property immediately to the east. And this is the property to the west. Excuse me, the north. And the other one was the south. That concludes staff presentation. I'll take any questions at this time. Thank you, John. Any questions for staff? Todd? Um, John, would you refresh your memory when the petitioners were here in November? What was the size variance they were requesting? Today it's a six foot. What was it back in November? No, but it's it was 10 feet, I believe. Okay. Yes. <coughs> it's Mike. And then, so what they're requesting now, does it go out? Further than the footprint of the current deck, how does it relate to where the deck ends? No, um, it's the deck. As you look, the 30 foot goes into right in this area, so the new addition will um, it'll be 24 feet. So, well, Mike, uh, no, I'll let the uh, the architect comment on that. The exact dimension. Any other questions for staff? Kirk. If you could just re refresh my memory. So the deck is not considered a structure. It's, it's, just it's considered an accessory structure. Okay. And it's in compliance right now. Right. But in terms, I mean, it's, it's referred to in these plans not because it changes um, anything about material about the application. It's just for reference. Correct. It's just showing existing condition. Got it. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for staff? I have yeah. a quick question. Uh, do you have an extra printout of this case? I got two of the same ones, but not this one. <coughs> Thank you. All right, if the petitioner's here, if you could please step forward, state your name for the record and sign in. You'll have five minutes. so much for taking the time this evening. Um, so I think most of you were here a couple months ago. So um, the main change that we made um, to the design is that um, instead of 10 feet, we made it four feet. Um, to answer the question about the deck, um, it is actually slightly smaller than the deck is now, the addition would be. So um, the, the addition would not really infringe on any lawn space that isn't already taken up by the deck. Um, the main, you know, hardship or difficulty is that when we enter into the rear of the house, um, you enter right into a very small galley kitchen, um, and our family, we, you know, we take our boots off in 
the doorway and we have to mop the floor frequently in order to get all of the debris out. It's slippery. The back door bangs against our um, stove um, when we enter the house and it really is kind of a hazardous situation and, um, and, and pretty difficult. Um, and there's also the deck is falling apart and the rear windows have rot and the rear, rear door has rot. So there's some updates that need to happen to the house um, one way or the other. And we'd like to make this you know, modernizing and um, um, more functional improvement to the house. Um, there was a discussion last time that they felt that some people felt that the plan was slightly too big um, it wasn't the minimum, so we did go back and make it four feet smaller, and I do feel that that, that is the minimum um, necessary to really create the functionality in the back door. Um, the, the other thing is that we did take into consideration that some people were saying, well, you could bump out the front of the house and do some you know, reconfiguring of the house in order to get what you need, um, which would obviously be a much bigger expense to us, but it also uh, really doesn't serve the neighbors as well. So you'll see support from our both next door neighbors and the neighbors directly across the street saying that they would very much prefer that we build to the back of the house than we build to the front of the house. Um, we are allowed to build about 10 feet out to the front of the house without any variance. Um, and we would much prefer that because we like the front of our house and I feel like it fits in with the neighborhood really well. Um, and you know, you can see from those pictures that it lines up with the front of the other houses and um, we, we really don't want to change it. Um, and the, the thing that I think is unique about this situation is that when you look at the aerial view of our neighborhood, our lot is very shallow, so that 30-foot setback is pretty unique in that we have a pretty small yard and a 30-foot setback compared to the neighborhood. Um, and we also have a particularly steep slope to our front, uh, the front of our house. And so we really, it's really hard during a lot of the year um, to use that front door as our main entrance when we're carrying groceries from the car or unloading our kids or you know things like that. And so um, this is Casey, who's our design build person that I'm working with. And I don't know, Casey, mm -hmm. if you want to introduce yourself. And say yeah, anything. Uh, my name is Casey Valit, and my company, Case Builders, uh, did the design for the addition, and we've reworked since we last met. Um, as Anna said, I don't really have anything specific to add. I thought Anna hit on all of the main points that were addressed, uh, or were addressing issues that came up in our last discussion. I think we've sincerely tried to take the comments that you made last at the last meeting into um, consideration and looked at different options. So I'm hap happy to answer any specific questions about the design, if there are any clarifications that should be made. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for the petitioners? <coughs> going once, going twice, no? All right, thank you. Is there anyone here from the public who wishes to speak on this? Should we sit? We sit? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> I will note that we did receive um, letters from um, 626 Madison Place, 627 Madison Place, 615 Madison Place, um, all expressing um, support for the request and um, noting that they would prefer as neighbors that the, the addition be built in the rear of the house as opposed to building out in the front. Um, and with that, we're in discussion. So I'm going to vote for this this time. Um, I think the effort by the petitioners to pare back what they were asking for, um, I appreciated that. Um, the, the, the unique topography of the front of the lot um, to me shows that there's a challenge going off the front. I'm glad to see neighbor support. Um, <laughs> 
so yeah, most of the neighbors, at least from the, what I could tell from the various letters, seem to be in support of this. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for this. Dave, <clears throat> I think they do have a difficult position with their rear yards. They and the two houses to their south both have much shorter lots, less shallower lots than the lots they back up to. Um, I, I was one of the people that said to the petitioners last time that it really, to meet your needs, you should, when you're asking for a variance from our regular rules, that you should ask for the minimum that you need. And I think you've really done that. I mean, it's clear to me that you've scaled back what was a much larger request than you really needed to meet your needs. And I appreciate you doing that. Um, the, and I'll, I'll echo Mike's um, sense of the front topography. And I drove by there again today. I had driven by there two months ago as well. And you do have a steep slope there. Um, really, to do anything to the front of the house, I think, is going to infringe on the slope and make it more of an apparent hardship to get in and out of the front of the house. So. Um, I'm going to support this variance. Any other discussion? Kirk? Uh, I agree with uh, what's been said so far in terms of the petitioner's effort to come back uh, with a more modest proposal um, and that there is a condition in the front. Um, I guess what troubles me, and I'd like to hear more input on this, is um, was the same thing that, that troubled me about the original proposal, is that there, there really is not a right to modify one's home beyond the zoning specifications. And there are different zoning districts in different neighborhoods that allow for the, the size home that um, is, is being requested. So uh, I guess I still struggle. Um, with this, um, I, it's always great to know people want to stay in their home and invest in it um, and make it more usable for them. But it really is obviously changing the structure uh, henceforth. So um, and changing the affordability and and would you know have a different. Uh, standard than its neighbors. So um, there's some peculiarity to the lot, but um, I guess I'm struggling with the assumption that an addition that violates a setback should be uh, encouraged or allowed. Heather. Um, I'm really glad that uh, they're back this month. Um, I This is a very unique lot. It is, as you can see from the aerial of the neighborhood, it is uniquely uh, shallow and uh, steeply sloping. And the condition they currently have with the kitchen entry and the sink and stove right there, I, I just can't imagine what that must be like. I, I will be supporting this. This does seem to me uh, in the spirit of the minimum required uh, to accomplish um, a reasonable entrance uh, mudroom to their home. Thank you. Any further discussion or a motion? Make a motion. Yeah, go for it, Dave. Um, petition ZBA 17-31. 621 Madison Place, a variance. Based on the following findings of fact and in accordance with the established standards for approval, the Zoning Board of Appeals hereby grants the following variances from Chapter 55, Section 5, colon 28, Area Height and Placement Regulations to allow a variance of six feet in order to construct a nine foot, nine inch by 19 foot addition to the rear of the residence. The rear yard requirement is 30 feet. The result will be a 24-foot rear yard setback. The addition is to be built per the submitted plans. A, the alleged practical difficulties are peculiar to the property and result from conditions which do not exist generally throughout the city. B, that the practical difficulties which will result from a failure to grant the variance 
and includes substantially more than mere inconvenience, inability to attain a higher financial return or both. C, the variance if granted will not significantly affect surrounding properties. D, the circumstances of the variance request are not self-imposed. E, the variance request is the minimum necessary to achieve reasonable use of the land or structure. We have support from Heather. Todd. Yes. Heather. Yes. Julie. Yes. Kirk. No. I vote yes. Mike Daniel. Yes. Dave. Yes. Mike Dodmeyer. Yes. Nicole. The request is granted. Moving on to ZBA 17037-618 Church Street. John? The next case is ZBA case 17-037. The address is 618 Church Street. Mark Chalou, representing the property owner, is, is requesting a six variance of six feet from Chapter 61, Signs and Outdoor Advertising, Section 5, colon 502, Subsections 2A. The ordinance requires signs to be installed a maximum of four feet from the building wall. The variance will enable a business sign to be installed and attached to a steel canopy 10 feet from the building wall. The petitioner is seeking to install a 44 square foot sign and attached to a steel canopy structure that is located above an outdoor seating area. The variance, if approved, will allow the proposed sign to project 44 inches into the public right-of-way. The sign will be required to be a minimum of eight feet above the sidewalk to allow for pedestrian clearance. If you'll turn your attention to the monitors. The first slide is the location slide. Location map shows the highlighted parcel. It is right here along Church Street, just south of South University and just east of East University. The next slide is the um, aerial map showing the highlighted parcel and surrounding conditions and properties. The next slide is the aerial zoomed photo of the uh, property, highlighted right here. These additional next slides are slides that were submitted by the applicant with his application. You see the um, subject restaurant property, and it shows 70 feet of total frontage for the restaurant and a 10 foot wide patio. The next slide was submitted with the application. This is looking um, south down um, Church Street, and the property is behind this existing construction right now. Before the zoning changed um, in the area, the pizza house was located right here. And then you see the adjacent properties before the zoning changed to D1, which now allows for properties to be um, constructed all the way up to the lot line with, for a zero setback. Next slide shows, um, and it is not to scale, but it shows the um, proposed sign being attached to this um, awning slash canopy area. You see the building wall back here, and you see its relationship to the public right of way. This is the um, schematic of the proposed sign. It's going to be 44 inches wide and 144 inches tall. The applicant submitted an, um, some photos of a uh, sign in another city that is somewhat similar and gives this sign some perspective. This is the photo at night showing what it may look like at night. These are photos that I took when I was at the property. You can see the subject property and then the construction adjacent to it just to the north. This is looking a little bit more to the um, left of the property, a little bit south, and you see the um, adjacent properties and the protrusion um, and the existing conditions. This is the area where the um, applicant is proposing to install the sign. This is looking south down Church Street 
and you can see the public right of way, the area where the sign is proposed to be installed, and the existing conditions of adjacent signs down south. This is looking directly north at the, um, with my, the subject property to my left and the um, existing construction taking place immediately to the north. And just another um, perspective showing the outdoor seating area, the sign location proposed, and up the um, north elevation up Church Street. That concludes staff's presentation. I'll take any questions at this time. Thank you, John. Questions for staff, Todd? Sure, but, uh, John, this doesn't pertain directly to the criteria, but I was going through the photos. Here you've got the number 12. And if you look down, you can't really see it here. It shows up in another one, but there's the garage bar sign, which already sticks out into the public right of way. And I was thinking as I was looking at this stuff again over this morning's coffee, how could we say no to this sign when there's already a sign sticking out there, the garage bar, which is doing the same thing this sign will do? So which, which puzzles me to ask, how did the garage sign get out there? Has that been there it, for decades? Or did they No. Well, let me, let, let me clarify. We're not yeah. focusing on the public right-of-way. The sign is, signs are allowed to project over the public right-of-way a maximum of four feet. Right. And so this sign, the garage bar, is installed on the building wall, and it's projecting the maximum of four feet, or whatever it may be. It's probably four feet. So the... the configuration of the pizza house you see how it insets and yeah. there's the building wall the code requires a sign to be in installed on a building wall not on a steel canopy so if it was installed on the building wall it would be ba back here the applicant is seeking the variance to allow it to extend right here in the same location correct that's that's the the kind of the um the hitch and 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 that's what their argument is is these were existing conditions, the zoning changed, these other buildings came in, have affected their vision, their sight lines, and they just want to be able to install in the same parameters of, in encroaching the four feet as other signs are. You said that very well, and I, and I understand all that. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking if I were looking down the street and the sign were there, mm -hmm. roughly as I see it, this Pizza House sign will be roughly in the same spot that the garage bar sign is from the point of view of the distance from the street. And I see you nodding your head, and it's uh, it, roughly, it's, it'll be at about the same spot. Exactly. So I understand how the technical problems, I'm just but, and as, to... And when an application came to my, came to my desk, I have to read the letter of the, the law and the Correct. ordinance requires it to be installed on a building wall. It's right. specific. Right. I and, understood. Yep, so. You said that very well. I agree. Any other questions for staff, Dave? Um, I know Pizza House did a significant uh, renovation and, and uh, build out some years ago before. Is this a D1 zoning now? Okay. That's correct. Before the D1 zoning, so they were required to set back. At, under the old zoning. So now the zoning changes and they're at a relative hardship with people that are building out to the lot line in terms of how they can put signage. So I see a real hardship here. Um, I've got my question for you, if they enclosed this uh, little patio space or um, instead of that built above it to bring their front to the lot line, could they then just put it on the building and have it be pretty much in the same place as what they're asking for? They could, but that, and would, that be, would comply. That would be with an expensive endeavor. It would go through site plan, and you're asking the <laughs> property owners to extend their building wall uh, 10 feet to accommodate a sign. So right. um, I think the route that they're taking is... Um, well, is, they might is, want the square footage. They might want I'll some say. more inside square footage on the second floor. I'm well, just saying that yeah, there are there there are options, but that is this is the much more streamlined version. Okay. <laughs> yep. So yes. Just, oh, go ahead. Go ahead uh, just to clarify, if if this were currently glassed in, the sign could go where they're requesting it. it no, the the code requires a sign to be installed on a building wall. They're going to um, install this on that canopy. 
but and, if the the, canopy, and the applicant is going to speak more to it. It's okay. attached to, to this right here. Right. Yeah. But I mean, if, 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 if there were glass there instead of air uh, between the columns, glass. that would essentially become the building wall. Glass where? Um, if they, if they if the wall came this right here, yeah. If, they, okay. if the wall came straight down, well, under that the, that would be a matter of interpretation. That would um, that would be an administrative call by me with, with whether that would be um, a wall or not. But that probably it, it would be um, that would be a matter of interpretation, and that would be enclosed um, eating area space, habitable space. So that might be a lot better. I could I could live with that as that would be my call. But yeah. as a zoning administrator, I have to interpret the code and make calls every single day. And mm -hmm. the code is clear on this one. Mm -hmm. To me, it said the building wall. So, mm -hmm. but the, thankfully, we're here tonight, and they have the option to seek a variance. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got a separate question. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Dave. Um, so, if they enclose this first floor in some manner creating essentially an outer wall at the lot line, and then installed this sign. But if we've given them the variance at that point, and, we're inter and you were to interpret that as a wall that they could install it on, would we be thereby giving them permission to put it out 10 feet from there? No, because th from that, that point, variance? then they could not. They, the, the maximum allowable um, projection into a public right-of-way for a sign is four feet. Oh, okay. Got you. Thank you. Any other? Kirk? Thank you. So just to, to clarify, aside from the situation created by the new zoning and its neighbors being built up to the, the lot line, the, the hitch in this, is, as you're saying, is that this what you're calling an awning is not technically a building wall wall Correct. right now. Would you call that a building wall? Uh, I'm not an architect or an engineer, so I, I, I don't know. So, um, um, it, and it, it, it doesn't infer anything about the, the strength of this, the frame or anything that is being attached to. It's just the definition of a wall or, or not that you're, Correct. It's bringing them here. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay. The petitioner is here. If you could please step forward, state your name for the record, sign in. You'll have five minutes. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. Yeah. Um, also, a con this is, um, excuse me, please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mark Shalou, uh, principal of uh, Shalou Design and lead designer of Shalou Design. And I represent uh, Mr. Dennis Tice, which is here with me today. He's the owner of the Pizza House. I've been designing and engineering and fabricating signs in Ann Arbor for over 42 years. About 65% of my signs are consist of neon, such as Zingerman's Roadhouse, Fleetwood Diner, um, Zola Cafe, Black Diesel, Logan's Restaurant. Uh, and some other non-neon ones are the Ann Arbor uh, District Library, Adventura, Sweetwaters, and we're working on a new project, uh, the standard bistro and laundry out on Jackson Road, the old Creekside. During my career, I try, I become more diligent in improving the landscape during the day and night with unique signage designs. I hope the colorful and artistic cre creations do reflect on the city and how colorful and artistic this town really is and will continue to be. One of my favorite and most recent projects was the uh, bringing back the historical state theater back to its glory in, when it was designed in 1942 by Howard Crane. We've also added two new deco signs to the theater entrance, which I have designed myself. Um, two other uh, items that uh, Dennis has uh, acquired uh, letters from his neighbors as well, which is not, which are not in the agenda packet. Um, that will we can pass out to you if you would like to have a copy. 
uh, from the, uh, what is it, Dennis, from the uh, south? Property owners uh, <coughs> directly east, north, and uh, uh, Maggie led the south, you director. If, if you'd like, I can hand them up. Do you have multiple copies here? Or yeah. just oh, okay. One of the reasons uh, also for this variance is uh, uh, the existing signage because of the new um, buildings on either side. And uh, my colleague, uh, Jay Bradley Moore, is here, the president of Jay Bradley Moore and Associates uh, Architect. He will give you, uh, provide you an overview of uh, some of the zoning changes that affect the current si uh, pizza house signage, which are really have been blocked out from one side. It's 10 feet uh, where the uh, Arbor Blue is in the new building, which is uh, basically coming out about five or six feet. So one of the uh, other hardships besides not being able to see the signs is, is an impact on his uh, current business because you cannot see any existing signs from walking down south to where most of the traffic is uh, going uh, 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 east and west on south to you. Do you, anyone have any additional questions for me about the current sign, I mean the proposed signs or be more than helping uh, gladly to answer <coughs> them. And Do you want Brad to refer to, refer to the zoning? Yeah, uh, Brad, uh, Bradley Moore is here. Brad, would you like to sign in? And he has any questions regarding, he's gonna walk through, he's in the packet. We submitted a letter from Hobbs and Black regarding the canopy as well as uh, Bradley will walk through the, uh, the zoning uh, changes that were made in the past. Good evening, Brad Moore with J. Bradley Moore and Associates Architects. I feel a little bit uh, guilty in, in having caused uh, some of this in that I was the co-architect on the new building that's now bracketing uh, Mr. Tice's uh, <coughs> existing building. I was also the architect on his building when he expanded it to the south. And I can confirm that the zoning has changed over time there was an established setback of about 10 feet along that street, and we were asked to respect it, and we did when we, when we uh, did his addition to the south. Um, <coughs> things change, zoning changes, and, and, and that's the situation that we find ourselves in. Um, I'm hoping also to be able to <coughs> uh, maybe find an interpretation of a, of a word that may make the variance unnecessary in your eyes. Um, one of the conditions in terms of owning a sign, as John pointed out, was to mount it on the wall. Um, <coughs> but uh, item C, that's item A under um, 502. Two, um, it says that a sign may be located on an awning, which is over a public sidewalk, provided that such structures not, ex not extend more than eight feet over the public right-of-way. And I also designed that awning that is there now uh, to cover that outdoor seating area. Um, it only projects out over the public sidewalk about eight inches, so it doesn't go eight feet as would be allowed out this way. But it is an awning and it does extend over the public sidewalk. So I think the code would provide um, the ability to mount that sign on that awning and uh, we would be in compliance with the code. That's certainly up to you guys to decide. Um, but I just wanted to point that out that the code does provide alternate methods for mounting the sign that I think we could be in compliance with. Uh, if you have any other questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any questions for the petitioner? No? All right. Um, is there anyone here from the audience to speak on this petition? I will note that we did receive letters of support from Maggie Ladd, the executive director of the South University Area Association. Um, letter of support from 621 Church Street. And 611 East University. With that, we're in discussion. Todd? Yeah, this is an easy one for me. John articulated well why the applicant was forced to come forward. And looking at how we're deciding this today, the words that 
and stick out, so to speak, in boldface are uh, the, we had the opportunity to do substantial justice and the applicant, I think, finds itself in a particular situation because of the zoning change. There already is a sign that sticks out there. So if one were to say, let's say you couldn't have any signs if you look down the street, that's obviously not true. There already is one there. And because they're set back, I think putting a sign out will allow them to be competitive for wandering students and everybody else who's in the area. So the, to me, this is an easy one, and I, I'll be voting yes. Kirk. Thanks. Um, I would agree with uh, Commissioner Grant. Um, I, I think in this case, um, it is hits all the criteria that it is peculiar and that the surrounding properties are complying with a different zoning ordinance, um, that it would ultimately end up in a hardship if the view of the sign was hidden uh, because it's trying to, it has been playing by the old rules and um, that it's not self-imposed because of the timing of the zoning changes and the construction around it. So um, I think this is one of those issues that's uh, Taylor made for the ZBA. Thanks. Okay. I have uh, two questions of staff. On first, are there any uh, size constraints on these signs that come out over the sidewalk? Um, well, the applicant will be allowed to have up to um, two square feet for every lineal uh, footage of. Um, business frontage that they have. So they'll be allowed to have up to 140 square feet of signage. So this is below that total. Right. And okay. so they, they will meet the square footage total. So the square footage total doesn't come into effect with the, um, the uh, variance tonight. And that will be depicted on the um, application f uh, when they submit the um, sign package they'll have existing signage and proposed signage and the total will have to be under that 140 i believe and then my other question of staff um i th i think we need to do something so that justice is served here given the change in zoning um would wouldn't it be the architect has suggested looking at uh sub clause c and allowing it to just be attached per the existing code to the awning. Can we just direct that that's, well, that's it, the case and it would meet uh, the zoning requirement? That would or? be also up to interpretation as well, whether that's an awning or not. So, But could but, we as a board just designate that we interpret that as an awning and that they could do it by right? Well, that's not what's on the table tonight. So I would just go ahead and continue on with the variance vote and okay. then I'll, I'll be it, voting for the variance. <laughs> Any other discussion? I have here? just a curiosity question. Do we have the power to determine whether that's an awning or is that up to you, John? That would be something that I would write a decision letter to the applicant and then they could appeal my decision gotcha. and then you would um, decide on the um, administrative decision. Thanks. Any other discussion or a motion? Mike? Yep. I'll make the motion. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kirk. Um, petition ZBA 17 037 618 Church Street, Chapter 61 variants. Based on the following findings of fact and in accordance with the established standards for approval. The Zoning Board of Appeals hereby grants a six-foot variance from Chapter 61, Section 55022A, Exterior Business Signs. The subject business will install a wall sign 10 feet from the wall. A, that the alleged hardships or practical difficulties or both are peculiar to the property of the person requesting the variance and result from conditions which do not exist generally throughout the city. B, that allowing the variance will result in substantial justice being done considering the public benefits intended to be secured by this chapter, the individual hardships that will be suffered by a failure of the board to grant a variance, and the rights of others whose property would be affected by the allowance of the variance. Do we have a motion? Do we have support? Support. 
Dave? Yes. Mike Dabmeyer? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Todd? Yes. Heather? Yes. Julie? Yes. Kirk? Yes. I vote yes. Mike Daniel? Yes. The request is approved. Um, Moving on to ZBA 17038533 South 4th Avenue. John? The next case is ZBA case 17038. The address is 533 South 4th Avenue. Carl O. Huter, representing the property owner, is seeking an alteration to a nonconforming structure to an existing duplex. The property is zoned R4C and is nonconforming for lot size. If approved, a new bedroom and interior stairs will be added to the first floor and a new bedroom to the second floor. A new dormer will be added to the attic and a deck will be constructed to the exterior yard, rear yard. The subject parcel is zoned R4C multiple family and is located between Packard Street and East Madison Street, east of South Main Street. The property is nonconforming as it contains 6,316 square feet and 8,500 is required in the R4C district. The home does not meet the side and front yard setbacks. Additionally, the lot is 48 feet in width and the code requires 60 feet. The home was built in the early 1900s and was converted into a duplex sometime in the 1960s. Uh, the structure is currently a four bedroom apartment on the first floor and basement level. The second floor contains a two bedroom apartment. The current owner who had purchased the home in 2011 plans on moving into the home and converting the second floor apartment into her living quarters. The bottom unit is occupied by her daughter. If you'll turn your attention to the monitors, the first slide is the location map. You see the highlighted subject property. The next slide is the location map, or the aerial map, excuse me, showing the existing property, uh, surrounding conditions and neighborhood. The next slide is the um, aerial photo of the property zoomed in. Uh, the um, applicant and we'll speak more to this but uh, there's two and you'll see later on the slides there's two uh, uh, existing detached structures back here which will be removed and one right over here which will also be removed and then um, you'll see in the future slides the additions and the construction that is being proposed um, this is the existing site plan for the um, application next slide shows a new site plan, the new first floor. Um, there see, will be a, a proposed new garage. It's not part of the um, alteration, but that's going to be back here, replacing the two existing uh, detached structures. There will be on the first floor, there will be um, a, a new uh, apartment or bedroom back here with the enclosed stairwell. And you see this area right here shaded. This is the second floor being shown, which will be um, an additional bedroom upstairs. The next slide is uh, the revised second floor. You still see the new interior stairs. And this will be the roof below where that bedroom uh, is for the first floor. This is going to be the new bedroom and new um, area over the first floor, this shaded area right here. There will be a new deck right here. The next slide is the um, existing attic with the proposed new dormer being installed right in this shaded area right here. Um, these are the elevations that were submitted with the application. The first one is looking at the um, rear of the home to the east. And you see the new door, uh, proposed roof dormer right here. The new stair, interior stairs right there in this section. And then the new first floor addition will be right here. And then this is looking at the home directly at, from the front uh, from uh, the street. And you see the new dormer right here. This is looking at the home from the north elevation. You see the um, proposed construction right here coming out. And then this is looking at it from the south, and you see the new dormer right here, and then the proposed construction back here. These are the photos of the property when I was at the uh, made the site visit. 
This is from the street. The next is standing at the rear of the property, looking directly at the back of it. So there's a, there will be, you'll see in the next slide, there'll be a deck right here that's going to be removed, um, or, and there's going to be a new deck installed right here, excuse me. And then the dormer will be on this other side. This will be filled in with a new bedroom in the second story. There will be exist, uh, uh, interior stair connection right here, and then the bedroom for the first floor right here. Uh, existing brick paver patio and deck that will be a new deck constructed in this area right here. These are the two detached structures that will be removed at the rear of the property and then will be replaced with a new uh, garage. And that's that third detached structure that's going to plans on being removed as well. This is a photo of the um, roof line in the rear. This is the adjacent property to the north, adjacent property to the south, and that is the conclusion of staff's presentation. I will take any questions at this time. Thanks, John. Questions for staff? Julie. Done. Is it a five bedroom on the first level and then a three bedroom or is it reconfiguring the Give me one second for that question. Uh, apartment one, which is down uh, the first floor is existing four bedroom apartment. And it'll be added a, another bedroom to make it a five bedroom, yes. Or no, it's just going to be, I'll let the applicant speak okay. on that. <laughs> on, the, on the floor oh, plan and the additions. And <laughs> Any other questions for staff? Todd? Yes. Uh, John, ignoring the dormer, which will expand the roof, so to speak, mm -hmm. while I was reading this, am I correct in saying that the other than the dormer, the envelope of the building is not changing. It's not being expanded out. That's correct? Um, or am I wrong about that? Well, the only expansion will be on the first floor in the rear, but it'll, um, it'll be in line with the existing plane of the house, and it'll meet the rear setback. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay. The applicant could please... Sign in, state your name for the record. You'll have five minutes. Uh, my name is Carl Huter, uh, architect, and I'm representing the owner, um, Mayling Tooley. Um, uh, Ms. Tooley is contracting from her larger home, um, moving uh, back into town, and uh, she bought this property in preparation for that uh, back in 2012. Um, the second floor has two bedrooms on it right now, but in order to uh, we're adding a second bathroom and expanding out over the deck that you see in the photograph that's up on the screen right now and in doing that re reconfiguring the second floor so it's a two bedroom with two baths uh, and a better um, uh, kitchen living dining area the bedroom on the first floor Ms. Tooley ha is an accountant and so she has a, a, a in-home business that she does and that was going to be her office, and it's on the first floor. But because someone else could buy the property, they would turn that into a bedroom, so I'm not going to disguise it. It's either an office or a bedroom, but for her purposes, she wants to make it into her office. Uh, the studio on the third floor, I purposely kept the ceiling, I'm purposely keeping the ceiling height at seven feet, so it's not defined habitable area, so somebody purchasing the property after this or Ms. Tooley's occupancy in the uh, property can't turn that dormer area into a bedroom because it doesn't comply with the building codes as far as being a habitable area. And because this is a rental unit, it's under the auspices of the uh, housing services folks and so they're going to check it every two years. So I, I've tried to design it not only to help my client but also to um, not allow someone in the future to turn it into something that it, it shouldn't be. Uh, there's a so the so the first floor and lower level are a four bedroom, and Miss Tooley's apartment will be a three bedroom apartment. 
Um, in, her, in her mind, it's a two-bedroom with an office, but I said, no, it can be construed as three bedrooms. And, I, and then there's a error. I, I don't know that her daughter is going to live in the, in the first floor apartment. Okay, I don't know where that came from, so. You, but, actually, you, I think you told me that. Okay, all right, so I must have been hallucinating that same. It's that pain medication I take, you know. Um, so, uh, so it's just a four bedroom. Are, are there any other questions? Yes. Yeah, if you're done, we'll, go ahead, Julie. Um, so the one unit is a four bedroom on the first floor and the other unit is a three bedroom with one bedroom on the first floor and two bedrooms above. Right. Okay. Dave. Uh, Carl, I have a question. The outbuilding that's closest to the house. You want it? What is it? <laughs> I, I looked at that. It looks like uh, like an outhouse with a picture window. Um, well, <laughs> um, it's a two-holer, Dave. It's a grand one. Uh, so. You will note that this is one of the few um, bamboo forests in Ann Arbor. Um, <laughs> and uh, someone in the 60s, and w those of us who lived through the 60s realized that they, this was like a studio. And then if you look at the back building, it has this big flipped up skylight into it. Right. So at some time, some artistic person lived on the premises and kept building these buildings, you know, without, you know, anyone saying anything. Um, so I. Right now, I, the the tenants in the apartment use it to store their luggage. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, do you want it? No. Okay. <laughs> I just said, uh, I Anybody was, else? It baffled me. I didn't know what, what it was. It can be easily <laughs> pushed onto the back of a pickup truck and we can have it on your yard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions for the petitioner? Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, there is no one left here, so I'm assuming no one's here to speak on this, so we are in discussion. Kirk. Given that there's no change to the setbacks and no detrimental effects, I think um, it looks to me like this uh, project meets the pretty low bar of altering a non-conforming structure, so I'll be voting in favor. Julie? Um, yeah, I do appreciate the uh, looking forward to somebody else owning it and, and not making it kind of a illegal duplex or triplex down the road, so I appreciate that. Um, but I think it's a, it's a good use, and if somebody wants to live and rent out Part of a duplex. I mean, that's kind of an ideal situation downtown. So I think it's a good, a good reconstruction of a, of a house that has obviously had some construction done over the years to it. So. Any other discussion or motion? Dave. Motion. A petition ZBA 17-038, um, 533 South Fourth Avenue, permission to alter a non-conforming structure. Based on the following findings of fact and in accordance with the established standards for approval, the Zoning Board of Appeals hereby grants permission to alter a non-conforming structure per submitted plans. A, the alteration complies as nearly as practicable with the requirements of the zoning chapter and will not have a detrimental effect on neighboring property. Do we have a motion? Do we have support? Support from Mike? Julie? Yes. Kirk? Yes. I vote yes. Mike Daniel? Yes. Dave? Yes. Mike Dabmeyer? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Todd? Yes. Heather? Yes. The request is granted. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on, I believe we've dealt with all reports and communications, public commentary. There is no one left. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Um, I just want to say one quick oh, thing. Yeah. Um, tonight is uh, Heather Lewis's last uh, night on the zoning board serving uh, the community so we would like, like to thank her for her time and um, we have another uh, member that will be joining us next month her name is Charlotte Wilson so she will be joining us uh, in February all right thank you thanks Heather, thanks, Heather. congratulations <laughs> <laughs> your sentence is over <laughs> All right.
I'm just a little weird. <laughs> all right, we have a motion to adjourn. This Support from Kirk. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>